Good morning, church. Good morning, church. We're here to worship this morning. We're here to celebrate God. Amen. So we didn't come here to just sit down and be spectators, but we came to worship. Amen. Who's here to worship with the Lord?
is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty deeds of the Lord or declare all his praise? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you save them, that I may look upon the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. Both we and our fathers have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedness. Amen. 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 They exchanged the glory of God for the image of the ox that eats grass. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea altogether. Therefore, Therefore he said he would restore them. And, and now Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to turn away.
from the mountain, the people gathered together, Aaron, and said to him, Come and make us gods. That shall be for us. For as if Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Break off the garden of earrings in which are in the ears of the wives, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off all the golden chains. They came from their ears, brought it to Abram. Mm -hmm. And he received the gold from the hands of the fashions and any of those engraved tools made bowls of packs. And then he said, This is your God, little God, the kind of little God. <laughs> of Israel that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a fast of the Lord, feast yes, of the Lord. Yes. Then they rose early in the next day, often burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down and ate and drank and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get down. Mm -hmm. For your people who brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. And then they <clears throat> made themselves full of calves and worshipped and sacrificed of it and said, This is your God, Israel, who has brought you out of the land of Egypt. Yes, yes. And the Lord said to Moses, and Have you seen this people? And indeed it is the stiff necked people who yes. have stiff necked people. Now therefore let them be alone, my wrath will burn against them, and I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. Glory to God. Then Moses plead with the Lord God and said, Lord, why doeth your wrath burn hot against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? And why should Egyptians speak and say, brought us out to harm them and kill them in the mountains and consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath and relent among us, relent from this hallelujah, harm to the people. Yes, yes, yes. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by only yourself, and said to them, I will multiply your descendants. And as the stars of heaven and all this land that I have spoken of, I will give it, and they shall inherit it all. Finally, the last. So the Lord relented from yes. the home, yes. Yes. which he yes. said he would do yes. to what he would do to the people. May God bless yes. this description. Yes. The gospel reading is coming from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. That is Matthew, chapter 22, starting at verse 1. It is the parable of the marriage feast. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. Yeah. And he sent out his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding feast, and they were unwilling to come. Again, he sent out other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatted livestock are all butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went their way. One to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his slaves 
and mistreated them and killed them. But the king was enraged, and he sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and set their city on fire. Yeah. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, right. but those who were invited were not worthy. Yeah. Go therefore yeah. Yeah. to the main highways, yeah. Yeah. and as many as you find there, yeah. invite to the wedding feast. Right. Yeah. Those slaves went out uh -huh. into the streets, and gathered together all they found, both evil and good. And the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests. But when the king came in to look over the dinner guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed in wedding clothes. And he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen.
remember, especially to pray for Sister Hall. Continue to pray for Bishop T. Larry Kirkland and Supervisor Barry Kirkland, presiding elder Steve Cousin and Sister Linda Cousin. At this time, may you come to the altar and let us follow the directions of the Russians as they lead us to the altar.
Ephesians chapter 5. Amen. And you're going to praise him. Praise him.
The sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, no foolish talk, no crude joking, which are out of place, but instead, let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, not, therefore do not become partners with you. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to God. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best of the time, yeah. because the days are evil. Yeah. Therefore, do not be foolish, yeah. but understand what the will of the Lord is. Right. Yes. Amen. Is that a good text? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. See you in the presence of the Lord. I want you to pray with me. I just need you to pray today. Amen. Pray with me as we consider the sermon and talk that we walk this way. Amen. 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 Walk. This way. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your convicting presence of thank your you. Holy Ghost. We know you're in this place. And we know you are working on us right now. God, we declare it's already getting better. We may not be able to see it. But we believe it and we thank you. We thank you now in advance for it getting better in our lives. Now God, send your anointing. Send your preaching power. I'm going to preach it like you gave it to me, God. But I need your power. I'm just preaching your word, but I need your power. Let your power preach through me, Lord God. Somebody here wants to get saved. Somebody here needs to be saved. God, I know you want to save them. And I know they want to get saved. But break through here, oh Holy Ghost. Save somebody. Transform us all, oh God. Into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. And we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. To Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Walk this way. Walk this way. Walk this way. About 15 or so years ago, former NBA great and all-star Charles Barkley got in trouble for something. I think it was when he threw somebody who was talking about him through a window. And he was the spotlight of public attention. Yes. And being an all-star, he was under a lot of criticism because they called him a role model. And Charles Barkley was famous for saying this. He said, I'm nobody's role model. He said, don't put that label on me. Because I'm not your role model. Role model should be your mom and your dad or your big brother or your big sister. Don't, don't look at me to be your role model. I admire him for his honesty. But 
with that spotlight should come some responsibility to want to be a role model. Hallelujah. Anybody who does not want someone looking up to them means that they are not up to any good whatsoever. But he was clear to say that I am not your role model. I am nobody you should be modeling your life after. When you see what I do, he's basically saying, do the opposite. Don't do what I do. Don't copy my behavior. Don't imitate what you see me do. Because I'm not your role model. Imitate someone else. That word imitate. That word imitate means to copy. It means that you see something or someone and you decide to follow that person or that thing as a model or as an example. That's what it means to imitate. And imitation is actually an advanced behavior where an individual observes and replic replicates or duplicates another person's behavior. It, it is a form of social learning where, where it will lead to the development of traditions and ultimately our culture. It allows for the transfer of behavior and customs between individuals whether they are genetically connected or not. That means that I can take on some good traits from somebody who is not related to me just by imitating them. It means I can look at uh, a preacher, and every preacher always has a preacher that they look up to. And, and if they come up under them, they begin to sound like that preacher. They begin to mimic that preacher. They may have that preacher's cadence. They may have that preacher's swag or that preacher's sound because they watch them and they duplicate them and they copy them as they form their own identity in preaching. Hallelujah. Don't look at me like you never looked up to anybody. Hallelujah. If you watch Kobe Bryant, you'll see he has an imitated game of Michael Jordan. That means he watched him and he studied him and he copied him. And it's okay to be a copycat as long as you copy the right cat. Amen. 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 So, 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 so imitation means that I am going to watch somebody and I'm going to duplicate it. So Paul writes this letter to the church of Ephesus. And he goes through the whole four chapters, you know, and in chapter one, he talked about the grace of God. That chapter two, he talks about the grace of God that we receive through faith that we are now saved. Hallelujah. And then he then pushes us to be united in the spirit of God because once we were alienated from God, but through Jesus Christ, he broke down the hostility that was between us and God, and then he said then that we must be united in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes. We're united in the Spirit. Yes. Then in verse 4, he kind of took a switch and started using this word called walk. And he said, be careful that you do not walk anymore like the Gentiles do. Because they are futile, they are simple in their thinking. They do whatever they want to do, and you not like that no more. Basically, what he's saying for us is, be careful that we don't walk like we unsaved anymore. Hallelujah for not being saved. Hallelujah for being saved. Hallelujah. He's saying, be careful that you walk as if you are saved. And so this term, walk, he, he doesn't mean put one foot in front of the other, so to say. But whenever you see in the book of Ephesians the term walk, what Paul is saying is be sure to live your life in a way that is not like the Gentiles. When Paul says walk this way, he's telling us now how to walk as new believers in the faith. Now, this church of Ephesus was a good church, hallelujah. They, they, they were a great church because if you remember in the 20th chapter of the book of Acts, 
uh, Paul had said, he had warned that church's elder to make sure that they are careful that they don't fall prey to the wicked teachings that may creep in their church. Hallelujah. And they were good at that. They, they didn't let none of them cats in their church. Because if you remember in the book of Revelation, the apostle John writes that they were good at being aware of evil as they came in their church. And John went on to say that they were diligent and, and, and they were and they were they persevered to the end. But there was one part of their churching that they didn't get right. And in the book of Revelation, John says that you have forsaken your first love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You do church really good. You, you, you know when to show up. You know when to stand. You know when to wave your hands. But there is something missing in your church. And, and John says only what Paul said years before. He said, you are lacking in your love. So Paul goes on to write this church. And he says first that you must be imitators. You must imitate God. You, 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 you must watch God. You must see God. And what you see from God, you are to duplicate. Because if you want to change the culture, the changing of the culture starts with you. And the changing of my culture starts with me. So if I want to change the church, I got to change myself. I got to do what the Lord tells me to do. And the Lord said through Paul in the, in the Ephesians that I must imitate God. Well, you say, how can I imitate a God who I cannot see? Because God is a spirit. But Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. So if you want to know how to imitate God, just look at Jesus. Because it is in Jesus Christ that the fullness of God is wrapped up in the flesh. God always intended for us to imitate him. Because in the beginning in the book of Genesis it said he created man. And he created man in the image of God. Now how can we be created in the image of God if God is a spirit? But on the inside of man lies the image of God. And God just wrapped us up in flesh. But he says, when you look in the mirror at yourself, when I get on the inside of you, I should see the character of me on the inside of you. He created us in his image because he wanted us to be a duplicate of him on this earth. Paul says that. We must imitate God. You say, why do we got to imitate God? The verse started with therefore. You know, therefore is a conjunction. With all my 40 and 50 babies, that conjunction, conjunction. What's your function? Amen. No. If you want to know what therefore is therefore, you got to go before the therefore. And if you go to chapter 4, verse 32, it says something to the effect, what does it say? It says, be kind to one another. Yes. Hallelujah, say it with me, be kind, be kind. to one another. Yes, and it goes on to say, be tenderhearted. Hallelujah. Yes. Say, be tenderhearted. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Then it says, what does it say? Forgiving yes. one another. Say, forgiving yes. one another. Hallelujah. Why? Because God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitated of God. Because God in Christ forgave you. What was Jesus' first words when he was on the cross? Where are my Bible readers at? He said, Father, forgive them. 
you see. I don't know about you, but when I see Jesus, I see a worshiper. Hallelujah. Because in the second chapter of the book of Luke, when his mama and his daddy couldn't find him, they were walking around looking for their own son for three days. Then all of a sudden it dawned on them, we better go back to the last place we saw him. And they went back and found him in the temple. And they looked at him as if they were shot. And Jesus looked at his mom and his dad and said, where else would I be?
going to walk this way, you yes, yes. got to begin with love. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. It identifies you yes, sir. as a disciple. Yes. Jesus said, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples. Not if you like each other. Not if the person did you wrong and you still ain't forgot about it. No, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. That you have love for one another. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say in your heart, I am commanded to love you. I am commanded to love you. I want to prove that I am a disciple. I've got to love each and everybody.
that in all these epistles, Paul spoke about behavior. He talked about the behavior of the church. It's in Ephesians, I just read it. It's in Colossians, I read that last week. No, the week before, it's in James, I read that last week. All this stuff about behavior, the stuff that come out your mouth, the stuff you do in the dark, the stuff you spread around and you know ain't true, all that stuff is talked about in the epistles when Paul is writing to the church. Which means everybody in the church ain't living like they're supposed to be living. Because had they been living like they're supposed to be living, Paul would not have to write a warning to the church reminding them that they are not to act like they used to do before they were saved. Yes. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. He even says in verse 7, don't even part with me. Don't roll with me. Don't hang out with folk who act like that. Stay away from the deeds of the darkness. He says in verse 8 that at one time you were darkness. Notice he doesn't say at one time you were in darkness. Look at the text. Look at the text. He said, didn't say you were in darkness. He said, you were darkness. At one time, you were evil. At one time, I was evil. But he says as he continues, now we are light. We're not in the light, but we are light because Jesus said in the Gospel of John, I am the light of the world. And if Jesus is the light of the world, then that light lives in the belief.